Hello everyone, this is lecture 19, Dimensions of the Vector Space. So far, we have spent a lot of time and effort on understanding, on understanding the geometry of vector spaces. Right? Um, but we have not yet discussed a very important concept um, or the very important geometric idea that is the size of the space. Right? Uh, for example, when we consider uh, R2 and R3, two-dimensional vector space or three-dimensional vector space, intuitively, we know that R3 is the largest space of the two, right? R3 is larger than R2, but can we somehow mathematically show that it is true? That is, three-dimensional vector space is larger than the two-dimensional vector space. Is there a way for us to measure side of the vector space or to determine the dimension of a vector space or of a subspace of a vector space for that matter? Right. So that's the idea of this lecture, that to find the dimension of a vector space or the dimensions of a subspace of a vector space. Right. Um, in this lecture, we will continue uh, to see the importance of the two concepts of span and set and linear independence uh, together with the concept of basis of a vector space. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to write out the definitions of the dimension of a vector space um, and give you some example that uh, related to the dimension of some familiar uh, vector spaces. Um, and then we're going to move on to find the dimensions of some solution space or some subspace of a vector space. Okay. Um, so the definitions of the dimension of a vector space, that is, if a vector space V has a basis um, consisting of N vectors, and then the number n is the dimensions of v. Um, denoted as right, so the dimensions of the vector space v is equal to n. Right. Uh, more uh, to this definition that when v consists of the zero vector, um, along the dimensions is defined to be zero. Or is defined as zero. Okay, so that's the dimensions of a vector space or the definitions, right? If you have a set of vector and the set of vector form a basis for the vector space, when you look at how many vectors you have in the basis, then that many vector is actually the dimension of the vector space. Okay. Um, the intuitive idea of the dimensions of a vector space is that the dimension of a vector space tell you how many vectors um, are needed to view the entire space. Right. Um, so in the last lecture, when we talk about basis, we kind of go into that already in terms of linearly independent and also the span and set. But here, we actually write down the number or the dimensions of the vector space we are dealing with. So intuitively, the dimension of a vector space tell us how many vectors are needed to build the space? Okay. Um, so when you look into some familiar vector spaces, um, we deal dealing with two-dimensional vector space, three-dimensional vector space, or in general, n-dimensional vector space, right? So when you look at the dimension, you want to know how many vectors do you need to build the entire space, right? 
for two-dimensional vector space, if you go back to the last lecture, I'll look at example one and example three, we can see that we need two vectors or two two-dimensional vectors to build up the entire two-dimensional vector space. So therefore, the dimensions of R2 is equal to two. Now, if you go back again to the last lecture, look at example two and example four, uh, more specifically, um, you need three three-dimensional vectors uh, to build up the entire three-dimensional vector space. So therefore, the dimensions of R3 is equal to three. Uh, similarly, if you go to R4, the dimensions of R4 is equal to four. And in general, the dimensions of Rn is equal to n, right? It's tell you that you need n n-dimensional vectors to build up the entire n-dimensional vector space. Now, the next one is P sub n, that is the space of polynomial functions of degree n. When you talk about polynomial functions of degree n, you start with a0 plus a1 times x plus a2 times um, x squared plus a3 times x cubed, so on and so forth, up to a sub n times x to the power n, right? Even though the power, the highest power or, or the highest degree is n, you need n plus one different terms to form the entire uh, polynomial uh, functions. So therefore, the dimensions of P sub n is equal to n plus one. All right, so let's say you P sub n of x is the functions, right? as I mentioned, you have a0 plus a1x, plus a2 x squared, so on and so forth, up to a sub n times x to the power n. Again, the degree is n, but you need n plus one terms to build up the polynomial functions. So therefore, the dimensions of p sub n is n plus one. Now for m22, that is the matrix or the square matrix, um, two dimensional the square matrix or the square matrix of the form two by two. Um, so the dimension is two times two equal to four. So it's very straightforward. And the dimension for the general form of a matrix, the M by N matrix is equal to M times N. So that is, um, so the dimensions of M to two, you have four, that means you need four components to build up the entire space. And you need M by N components to build up the entire space of N, uh, capital M, M, N. All right. So from this example, we can say, we can answer the questions we have earlier that um, when we consider R2 and R3, right, intu intuitively, you know that R3 is bigger than or larger than R2. But now we can say more specifically in mathematical term that R3 is larger, is a larger space than R2 because it takes more vectors to build the space, all right? So from this example, we can say that R3 is a larger space than R2 because it needs more vectors to build the space. Okay, um, so that is the dimensions of some familiar vector spaces. Now we're gonna move on to another example um, where we want to find the dimension of span of S. Right? So span of S is that if you have a um, set of vectors, span of S is the span set. Right? Um, so if you let S to be equal to V1, V2 up to Vn, right? um, then every vector um, in a span S can be expressed as a linear combinations of the vectors in S. Right. 
So you have a spend in set and you need one more condition so that the spend of S um, can give you or form the basis of uh, the vector space, right? Um, thus, if the vectors in S are linearly independent, they form a basis um, for span S. And because um, you can express, um, you have a span in set and the vectors in S is linearly independent. So, uh, and you have the N vectors in the set S, therefore the dimensions of span S is equal to N. Right. So this N vectors give you right, a span in set and also they are linearly independent. Um, so therefore you count how many vectors you need to build up the entire vector space and that is n vector. So therefore the dimensions of span s is equal to n. Now we're going to move on to something that um, we have done already in the past, in the previous lectures, um, that is to find the solution of a system of linear equations. But we're going to look at the dimensions of the space. And in this space, we call the solution space. right? because sometimes you don't have a unique solution. You have um, in infinite, uh, many, infinitely many solutions. And when you have infinitely many solutions, some variables become free variable. And when you have free variable, you can choose free variable to be equal to a parameter. Right? Um, and we look into that type of space, the type of spaces, okay. Um, so given or consider the following system, right? you have a system of three equations with three unknowns, x1, x2, and x3. Um, there are two parts to the example. The first one is, can you solve for the solution of this homogeneous linear system and come up with a basis for the solution space? I'm going to guide you through this, of course. And then after you have or you form the basis, can you find or determine dimensions of the uh, of the space? Okay, so first of all, I'm going to solve for the solution of this homogeneous linear system and see if the solutions we obtain or the vectors um, can form a span set or n the linear are they linearly independent uh, to form the basis for the solution space? Okay, so part A. What you do is you find the solutions of the system. Um, so to solve for the solutions of the system, um, we go into turn this system into an augmented matrix um, of the form. So one, one, negative one, this is zero. Uh, negative two, negative one, two, zero, and negative one, zero, one, zero. And you're gonna type this or input this into Python and hopefully give you a reducible echelon form. And then you can solve for x1, x2, and x3. Now I'm gonna turn to Python to aid with the calculation. So on the left hand side, I have the lecture note and on the right hand side, I have the code. So we can work on this together. Um, so the augmented matrix is of this form and I'm going to input this into the code um, and see what I get. Right. So it's one, one, uh, negative one, zero, then negative two, uh, negative one, two, zero. And the last row is negative one, zero, positive one. All right, so let it run, see what happened. So the solution is, um, so this is the redu reduced row echelon form. Um, and we get that 
x1 uh, minus x3 equal to zero and x2 is equal to zero, right? Um, so for the first equation, you can solve for x1 in term of x3, right? And therefore you can say that x3 in this case is a free variable, right? Because x3 is a free variable, you let x3 to be equal to a parameter t. This is a real parameter, right? Uh, t, t is a real number, right? So therefore the solution of the system is of the form. So the solution is, right? So x1, x2, x3 is equal to, um, so because x1 is equal to x3 and x3 equal to t, so x1 is equal to t, x2 is equal to zero and x3 is also equal to t. Uh, so this is the solution of the system, right? With t as the parameter. Um, and from here, if you see that you can take t out of the vector, um, it can be written as t times one comma zero comma one, right? Again, in this case, t is equal to a real number, right? Um, so this vector actually, uh, or this vector right here, actually span the solution space, right? Because t is any real number, so you can get whatever you like, right? Um, so v spans the solution space, right? And since you only have one vector of the form, one, zero, one, right? It does not depend on anything. It is obviously linearly independent and is linearly independent. Therefore, you can say that uh, the vectors be form a uh, basis. Um, so vector v is this um, um is this vector right here, right? Form a basis of um for the solution space. Right. And because you only need one vector uh to form a basis for a solution space, um you can conclude that v uh in part b that the dimension of the solution space is equal to one. Right, because you only need one uh, vector to form the basis. Right, so therefore the dimensions of the solution space is one. Okay, so I hope that give you some idea of how to first form the basis for the solution space. And from that, determine the dimension of the solution space. Now we're gonna move on to a similar example. In this example, you have a, a system of linear equation with two equations and four unknowns, right? Um, similar questions. First, we're gonna find a basis for the solution space of the homogeneous linear system. And then from there, determine the dimension of the solution space. Okay, so part A, we're gonna find the solution of the system. Right. So to find the solution of the system, again, what we're gonna do is turn this system into an augmented matrix of the form. All right, so three, one, 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 zero. And this is five, negative one, one, negative one, zero. And I'm gonna input this into Python to add with uh, the calculations. Um, so I got here, that is three, one, one, one comma zero. Uh, so let me delete the last row here and five, negative one, one, negative one, zero. Let it run, see what happened. So this is the augmented matrix that, uh, sorry, this is the reducible echelon form that we got. So you write uh, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 
plus one fourth x three equal to zero, and x two plus one fourth x three plus x four equal to zero. Fine. So from this system, we obtain x one. We can rewrite x one in terms of x three and x two in terms of x three and x four. Right. So x3 and x4 are the free variables. So x1 equal to negative one fourth x3, and x2 is equal to negative one fourth x3 minus x4. Okay. Now we can choose a parameter for x3 and a parameter for x4, right? Because x3 and x4 are free variables, you can choose anything you like, right? So you let x3 to be equal to negative 4t. You can choose this to be t, doesn't really matter. I choose this to be negative 4t because um, if you put negative 4t into the place here, um, x1 become t, it's just look nice. It doesn't have to be negative 4t, it can be positive 100t, it can be uh, one over three t, something like that. Um, it doesn't have to be negative 40. I choose negative 40 um, so that it looks nice for x1. And it will look nice here for this term as well. And then x4 to be equal to a parameter r, right? uh, where t and r are real numbers. OK. Um, therefore, the solution of the system is Right. You have x1, comma, x2, comma, x3, comma, x4 is equal to, right, when you substitute negative 4 into here, you get x1 to be equal to t, x2 is equal to t minus r, x3 is equal to negative 4t, and x3 is, uh, x4 is equal to r. Now, from this solution, you can see um, the solution depends on two parameters, t and r. Right. So now let's rewrite this solutions um, as, so I'm gonna break this solution down into two different parts. One part depends only on t and the other part depends on r. So I write t comma t comma negative four t, comma zero, like zero here because our, this entry does not depend on uh, on t, right? And I separate the, the second term out into t minus r, minus r for later um, here because I just want uh, the second entry depends on t only. Now you add the second part to this solution that is, so the first component here does not have r, so that should be zero. The second component here have negative r, so that is negative r. The third component does not have r, so that is zero. And the last component is with one r, so that is r. And there's two parts to the solution. The first part depends on t only, and the second part depends on r only. So t, you can take it out and become a constant multiple. And you have t times one comma one comma negative four zero plus r times zero negative one zero one. Okay, and remember again t and r are real numbers. Okay, uh, so from here the solution is a linear combinations of um of the two vectors. Um, so I call this vector v one. And this is vector V2. Um, so that's one thing uh, that we need, right? We need the spanning set. Uh, spanning set is that um, the vectors can be, um, um, any vector in the space can be written as a linear combination of the two vector V1 and V2, right? So this shows that. Uh, v1 and v2 span the solution space.
Now, the next one um, is to show that these two vectors are linearly independent. Right. So that is next. What we do is um, we form the equation C1 times 1, comma 1, negative 4, 0, plus C2 times 0, negative 1, 0, 1, equal to the zero vector. Um, and from here, obviously, you can solve for C1 and C2, and C1 equal to C2 equal to zero. That is C1 equal to C2 equal to zero. Therefore, then uh, C, sorry, V1 and V2 are linearly independent. Um, so you have a set of two vectors, V1 and V2. The, uh, the vectors are span, is form a span and set and also uh, are linearly independent. Um, so therefore, thus V1 and V2 form a basis for a vector uh, for the solution space. Um, and in this case, you have two vectors. You need two vectors to form a basis uh, for the solution space. And so therefore, the dimensions of the, um, of the solution space is equal to two because you need two vectors. So in part B, the dimensions of the solution space is two. Now we're gonna move on to subspaces. Okay, so in this example, you have subspaces, subspaces of the three-dimensional uh, vector space. And for subspaces, it can have uh, dimension zero, it can have dimension one, two, and of course three. For zero-dimensional subspaces, um, so what you do is, is only the zero subspace. Or we only the zero subspaces, and uh, when you look at the coordination here, um, so this at the origins, right here is the zero dimensions, right? or the zero dimensional subspaces. Okay, now for one dimensional subspaces, this include any subspaces spent by a single non-zero vector. Right, so such a subspace, uh, subspaces are lined through the origins. Um, you need lines to uh, to go through the origin because you go back to the definition of subspaces of a vector space um, that require three things, right? Zero is in the subspace and it's closed under um, the, the set is closed under vector additions and um, it's closed under scalar multiplications, right? So the first requirement for subspace, uh, to, for a set to be a subspace of a vector space that zero has to be in the set. Um, right, so therefore, lines have to go through the origins, right? If it's not going through the origins, then it does not going to work. Now, for two-dimensional subspaces, um, you have any subspaces spent by two linearly independent vectors. So such subspaces are planes through the origins. Okay, um, so uh, in this coordinate system, um, you have the light going through 
um, the going through the um, the origin. So this is one dimensional uh, subspace of R three. Um, here on the second picture, you have a plane going through the origin, and that is two dimensional subspaces of the um, of R three. And in the last picture, when um, you can see this part is two dimensional subspaces of uh, three R three because uh, that is the plane going through the origins. Um, the last definitions we have here, three dimensional subspaces, uh, subspaces that is the entire R three, right? so only R three. So it we need to have any three linearly independent vector. Um, in R three, span all R three. Okay, so uh, that's why we have this cube right here to indicate that. And uh, that is the entire uh, R3, right, or three dimensional subspaces. Okay, um, we're gonna uh, continue with some example for the, to find the dimension of some subspaces of vector space. Okay, um, so in example six, we have uh, the question is to find the dimension of each subspace of R3, right, so R3 because the vectors of consideration is uh, three-dimensional vectors, okay? So for this set, you have W to be equal to uh, D, comma uh, C minus D, comma C for C and D are real numbers. Um, very similar to the um, example when we work with solution space. What we do here is that we rewrite the vector D, comma C minus D, comma C, into two different components. The component depends on D only and the component depend on C only. Um, so the first component here um, is only D. So there's no C, right? So you write D comma, this is minus D. So this is minus D. And the last component here is zero because there's no D. You add the second part to the solution or to the vector. Um, the first component does not have C, so that should be zero. The second component have one C, so that's C. And the last component has C as well. Okay. Now, this, um, the first part, right, the first vector, and you take D to become a scalar multiple. That is D times one comma negative one comma zero plus C times zero comma one comma one. Remember, in this case, C and D are real numbers. Right. So now, instead of one vector, you have two vectors. So this vector can be written as a linear combination of V1 and V2. So this is V1 and a V2. Right. So V1 and V2 span the, uh, the set. Right. Um, now, the next thing that we need to show is that uh, V1 and V2 are linearly independent. Right? So we can show that. So I'm going to drop a lot of formality here um, that C1 times uh, 1, negative 1, 0, plus C2 times 0, 1, 1, equal to the 0 vector. And this show that C1 is equal to C2 equal to 0. So that is. V1 and V2 are linearly independent, right? So you have two vectors that span the, that form a spanning set and they are also linearly independent. So it's form a basis for the subspace, right? So therefore the dimensions of the subspace of R3, is two, right? Because you only need two vectors to form this subspace, right? So this is um, uh, the uh, two, this is two dimensional uh, subspace of R three. Now moving on to problem B, 
right? You have a vector of the form two b comma b comma zero, right? Um, to b b comma zero and b is a real number. Uh, so you can take out the b and this become b times two comma one comma zero. Um, again, uh, for this you have a this um vector span um the subspace or form a span and set. And because there's only one vector, obviously it still does not depend on any other vector. Uh, so therefore it's formed a basis for a vector for the subspace of the vector space. Right? Um, and because there's only one vector, the dimension of the subspace of R3 is equal to one. Right? So the dimension of the subspace of R3 is one. Now, moving on to the next example. Now, for this example, you have um, the set uh, three four dimensional vectors. Now, again, you want to show that the set will span the entire uh, subspace. And also the set, um, the vector in the set are linearly independent so that you can form a basis for the subspace. Okay, uh, so let's see what we have here. So for this problem, the given set is already um, has the, um, has the uh, properties that is uh, span um, the subspace W, right? So, um, can see that any vector in the subspace W can be written as a linear combinations of the vectors V1, V2, and V3 in S. Now, the one thing that we need to show is that the the vectors in the set has to be um have to be linearly independent, right? So to do that, what we do is we form C1 times negative one two five zero plus C2 times. 3, 0, 1, negative 2, plus C3 times negative 5, 4, uh, 9, 2, equal to the 0 vector. Um, so from this uh, equation, um, we, can we can form the system of linear equations um, as follow. Right? So negative C1 plus 3C2 minus 5C3 equal to 0. Uh, to C1 uh, plus 0 C2 plus 4 C3 equal to 0. 5 C1 plus C2 plus 9 C3 equal to 0. And 0 C1 minus 2 C2 plus 2 C3 equal to 0. Right. Uh, so from here, you try to solve for the value of C1, C2, and C3. Right. So it's not obvious uh, to, to get the value of C1, C2, and C3 by just looking at the system. Um, so what you can do is you form a augmented matrix of the system. That is negative 1, 3, negative 5, 0, then 2, 0, 4, 0, 5, 1, 9, 0, 0, negative 2, 2, 0. Okay. And then you're going to input this into the uh, into Python to to help you with the calculation and see what we get. Um, so I enter the values of the augmented matrix into the code and I let it run, and it's come out like this. Right. So as you can see that C1 depends on C3 and C2 also depends on C3. So from here, um, let me actually add another page here. Um, so um, you get that um, from uh, the from the reduced row echelon form, that C1 uh, plus 2C3 equal to 0, and C2 minus C3 equal to 0. Okay, so from here you can solve that uh, C1 equal to negative 2C3, and C2 is equal to C3. Okay, uh, so 
uh, they are not linearly independent. In fact, they are linearly dependent. Right? So it felt this set of vectors felt to be a linearly independent set. Um, um, so we have that C1 and C2 depends on a C3, right? so whatever you got for C3. So now we're going to go continue with um, with the calculations. Right. So now if you let, assume that because C3 is a, a free variable, right? uh, let's say that C3 is equal to 1. Right. When C3 is equal to 1, C1 is equal to negative 2. And C2 is equal to 1, given that C3 is equal to 1. Again, you can choose any value you like. We just want to show that these vectors are linearly dependent because they depend on one another. Um, so from here, you can have C1 to be negative 2 V1 plus C2, which is 1 times V2 plus V3 equal to 0 vector. Now you do some manipulations, you can see that V3 depends on V1 and V2. That is two times V1 minus V2. Because V3 depends on V1 and V2, you can drop V3 all together from the set. Right. So now the new set that we get, let's see, the set S1 consists of just two vectors, V1 and V2. And these two vectors span the subspaces, right? Because you can write V3 as the linear combinations of V1 and V2. Um, so all V3 depends on V1 and V2. We don't need V3, right? We only need V1 and V2 to span the entire subspace, right? And V1 and V2 are linearly independent. So therefore you only need two vectors to uh, form a basis for the subspace. And because of that, the dimensions, sorry, the set form a basis for the subspace W. And because of that, plus the dimensions, of the subspace is two, right? Because you only need two vectors to form basis for the subspace. Um, so I hope this helps. I hope you get the idea of how to actually calculate or determine the, the dimensions of a vector space or the dimension of a subspace of a vector space. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, that's it for me in this lecture. Uh, have a good day.